Okay. Hi. Um, this will be the second video in uh, this this series about anxiety. So it's an addition to the previous one. And I just want to answer a couple of questions that came uh, from my students, mostly girls. And also, um, I didn't finish the story completely. So I, I want to tell you... Um, what is the situation now and maybe give you some tips that I um how am I handling my condition now and where I am at now so it, this can also be beneficial for some of you so uh, if you have any I won't make any more videos about this topic but if you have any questions you can leave um them in the comments and also you can email me so I'm always glad to help and share anything that I um went through um if this can help of course i will i will share it so most of the questions that um i understood them as being related to um being a vulnerable girl um and having anxiety so um how much of that could i share with my environment how was that received um what was my identity like with myself did i th did something change there uh, how did I see myself and perceive myself from that point on? Um, and my relationships. So how were my relationships affected? And then also, um, was that considered to be a taboo um, at that time when I experienced it? And so this can be combined into one answer. So I'm just going to go and quickly do that and answer uh, these questions. First of all, um, we now live in, in 21st century 2023, so I don't think anything should be taboo anymore, first of all, um, especially not something that is considering expressing yourself and how you feel and um, what kind of issues do you have. You should be completely open to share that without any shame. There is no like shame, especially with anxious states. It doesn't help at all. Um, but it, it is normal, I guess, to feel ashamed um, because this state changes the way you see yourself and it changes your life for a certain period of time. So then you may experience feeling ashamed uh, because you cannot do some, some things, you cannot complete something that you wanted, uh, your mood may be changing and some other people may, you know, think that something is wrong with you and then you feel additionally ashamed so this is definitely something that happens and I experienced it as a girl at that time. So I, my personal experience in general um, is that girls, younger girls, like younger than 25 are often uh, taken uh, less seriously. Um, so when I went to, to doctors or when I was asking for advice, so in my case, um, I were not I was not taken seriously by some men who were at the position of power. They were they were authority, uh, especially doctors. Um, I don't know. In my case, like uh, at that time, I was looking probably younger than than I was. So they were looking at me as this young girl uh, whose life is ahead of you. Sometimes they would comment something like, it's not okay to be sad, that will affect your beauty. Or it's not okay, or you shouldn't be worried like that. You should, you know, go out, do something. Yeah, I mean, they were not um, invested in the state. I think it was hard for them to take, um, take, cases like this seriously it may depend from country to country if you have a good support in your country and if you have doctors who are uh, who you trust that's amazing um if especially psychiatrists psychologists but uh be prepared that if you go and ask for help if you are a younger girl they will you will get lots of comments and this is something that is just true um and that is, I think, why this topic became taboo. So parents um, and you yourself also will say, okay, to avoid this shame and to avoid this unpleasant situation with a, a, with a lot of people, I will just not share it with, with anyone. And so 
that's how it becomes. So I, I remember in my family, um, uh, for the for, for some time it was important um that nobody knows um so i i was not allowed to share anything that was happening to me in that regard so so that my image would not be you know destroyed in some way that's how they thought and for me at, from this position now if i had to give an advice to someone my advice advice would always be to be honest because um, ultimately, um, these states, like I said, mostly anxiety and depression that are not related to other mental illnesses, could be considered in a different way. So I read a book recently, and I watched uh, some some podcasts with this uh, wonderful psych uh, psychologist um, named Sarah. Her book is titled It's On You. So it's a book about... Um, crisis that young people go through usually um, about how is, it is so easy to lose yourself and what are the manifestations of that so how do you know that you lost yourself and then how can you help you, yourself and in that book there is actually a part when she says that she had this very similar experience to my experience and probably to a lot of others uh, where uh, she looked herself in the mirror and she couldn't relate to that person and that is very scary. Like I said, for me, that um, I I thought immediately that I was that something was wrong with me, that I was sick. And then um, tomorrow, I think she also had panic attack and anxiety. Um, so she defined that as having an existential crisis in a way that you cannot. You lived a certain life for so long, or you were chasing something. That's also something that I mentioned in the previous video. When you are too ambitious, you can chase after something and then lose yourself. And in a, in a drastic way, that manifests as you not being able to relate to yourself. And then, you know, anxiety and panic comes from the inside as a result. But it's a state. So um, it, definitely, it, it, if you define it as an illness, it has much more weight um, so I think if you Google it, you will have like 50-50 uh, data that some define it as a state, some define it as an illness. Um, so th we have very blurred lines there. It's very confusing to, to, and then, but it's very important if you say to yourself, okay, I'm sick, so something is wrong with me, or I'm going through a crisis. So the way you label it, 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 it just, um, makes you look at the thing in a different way and, and there is actually a very interesting thing that uh, she said in the book about um how do you know that you may have an existential crisis there are like few criteria but one of the criteria is um are you allowed to be yourself and so for a lot of people um, and some of my students i know that in the conditions where they live and how they live they are not able to express themselves at all. So the, the environment and themselves are in conflict. And in that way, like you definitely need others. Like I said, you cannot be alone um, for your anxiety. Also, that's not good. So you build, build your identity um, in relationship or um, across from others so they define you in a way and so you, if you live in, envi in an environment where others define you in a very um, bad way or they don't get you or they don't accept you if you're for example a member of a LGBTQ um, that was that 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 was something that clicked in my mind so if you have a different identity and you live in a in an area where your identity is not accepted there is no way that you won't have an existential crisis so you need to move, move from there you need to um, live a life that corresponds with your identity which is hard it's not easy but um if you see it that way, then again, your anxiety becomes almost as a consequence. It, it's a consequence of the of the life that you're living. Vulnerability, um, at, as itself, um, for I wish I knew this earlier. Uh, for me, definitely, it wasn't a quality. I was looking at vulnerability as something negative or unnecessary something that will stop you something that will expose you to others 
Um, so it, it, I didn't consider it as a power. But now, especially, we live in these times where um, it is necessary to share whatever you're experiencing. It should be out there because that's the only way you can change it in a way. So that I, I am amazed by how many people around the world are standing up for the cause that they are or for the issue that they experience in their community before it was completely something that was almost impossible to share. And then also um, when it comes to these experimental treatments, I am somebody who did not try any of that. Um, I tried meditation. I tried to push through by myself without and like basically with just vitamins. I um, There was a time where I just want, wanted to like build myself and be stronger and then I didn't take anything but definitely around the world you see people who are experiencing and using different things uh herbal medicines some like um even shamanic practices um psych psych psychedelic um drugs um to overcome their crisis or to oh, to try to like grasp what's going on and and to to eliminate anxiety um, me personally, what I think about that is that, of course, everyone is um, everyone is free to do with it, whatever they want with their life. From I, what I researched and from what I know um, is that a lot of these things can have an adverse effect. It can make you feel even worse. So that's why I was a little bit scared to even think about that. So I cannot share any further information because I didn't try anything. And I would um, advise you to think twice and to think carefully about what you're doing because um, ultimately what you're trying to do is get close to yourself and discover what was the cause of your anxiety why were you not living according to your self? Maybe what was the trauma behind it? Um, what are some unresolved issues that you have? And if you want to get closer to yourself, I think just using a lot of these um, things that will make you uh, feel out outerworldly or they will make you experience something else. I, I personally, I don't think that can help. I think just very hard work on yourself can can push you through. Another thing that I can talk about uh, from the experience of being an, uh, a younger uh, woman with anxiety is definitely um, the acceptance of my body and the acceptance of how I looked and how I how was I perceived. So I was somebody who, uh, I, I was a dancer for a couple of years uh, professionally. And um, as a dancer, you have to, um, of course, look yourself in the mirror every time when you're practicing your routine, even when you're exercising. So the rooms are filled with mirrors and you have these poles and you have to look at yourself constantly. You have to accept the way you look. You have to accept how you look compared to others who are standing next to you. You have to focus on the routine and be the best that you can be in what you're doing so that your movements are elegant. It's a very demanding world, definitely. Uh, but I was really, uh, I, I loved it. It was something that I wanted to do. And I always admired people who can express themselves without any constraints, who can say, this is who I am, this is how I look, and uh, that have this inner energy uh, of confidence and um, playfulness, creativity in a way. And so I wanted to kind of, um, I knew that I had that, but it was so deep down, um, you know, because of my upbringing, I was um, brought in a family that was a little bit conservative, I can say. So we didn't talk about, you know, expressing yourself and um, being creative, being an artist. Um, that was something that, that was just not, um, not the topic in, in my family. Uh, also, um, a female body as, as, as itself was not a topic at all of discussion. It was something that you, you know, did not expose in a way.
And so when I entered this world of dance, that was a big revelation for me because suddenly I had to be this confident girl that was doing these movements and I had to look elegant and gracious and my body had to be in perfect condition or to look good because I was evaluated by others. So I, I noticed that I was somebody who was lacking in self uh, reliance and self uh, good self image completely. I was uh, I, I I always asked others about my routine. Did I do it well? How can I improve? And I also had a lot of comments from my my um, choreographers that I had to look in the mirror more. Um, because I was looking down, I I couldn't look at myself compared to other um, other uh, group members. So that was one probably a red flag that I should have noticed. Um, and this is something that um, now I think younger girls, you don't have to live like that. You don't have to go. You, there is nothing to be ashamed of. Even as a younger girl, you should. Um, just get to know yourself familiarize with yourself if there is something that can be improved try to work on that um definitely realize that you are unique um and you everyone was created for something so you will ultimately find your purpose um if you're not succeeding in something that you want that that is probably because it's not for you um, and you have to accept that and always, always have this inner uh, sense of love and care for yourself. Uh, like I said, some some people are just born with that or they're they're raised in, a, in families that that is cultivated. So they're free to be whoever they are and express themselves. And that is amazing. I met some of these and they become amazing people that can share love and share their knowledge um, if you are somebody who's ashamed, who's always inside of yourself, who um, is constantly critiquing um, yourself, then uh, there is nothing to come out. You will not be able to um, to go through life, you know, having positive communication with other people. And that is very important for anxiety, because if you um, are constantly having negative feedback from other people, that will increase your anxiety through life ultimately when it comes to relationships again I had doctors who would say I know <laughs> it's hard to find somebody who will understand you as if I was or as if having anxiety is something to that is um to be avoided um I had a doctor who said I don't know how will you be able, if you cannot breathe, if you cannot hold your breath, how will you be able to kiss? Mm, then I had a doctor who told me that, um, that I shouldn't be thinking about changing the world. I should just get um, into a relationship and that will be like my ultimate goal. So a lot of people giving you advices or advice, sorry, that completely un- Un, unrequested so they're just sharing what they think of you one doctor actually told me I know when you're young and good looking um, it's also hard to be smart so act more dumb in a way it's just crazy like I I, I know that you know all of you have some of these um, comments in your mind that you received that were people just telling you but if if uh, a professional does that in a professional setting that becomes very worrisome I um, there were a couple of times where I was looking for help for for example my racing heart uh, I was not feeling very good and then the, the first thing the doctor would ask me is were you taking any drugs again this is Mm, it can be very scary because people are labeling you from the outside without knowing you because your symptoms of anxiety, they turn out to be a certain way. So you may sweat, you may feel dizzy, you may have a racing heart. And instead of them telling you that, you know, helping you and diagnosing all these symptoms they're giving you like life advice and they don't know <laughs> anything about you so you may experience that and that is something that 
I just want to say you have to push through that and don't pay attention to any of that. It is not important. Um, ultimately, you will find uh, professionals who will be helpful. In terms of um, my progression, so like I said, before COVID, um, I, you know, when, once you have anxiety, um, once you experience that, um, it may go away completely, but then some event may trigger this feeling that or this fear that you may have anxiety so because it's a very um hard state to be in so your body is now always prepared to look for signs whether you may have anxiety so it, sometimes when you don't even have anything resembling anxiety or if you overcome it after a couple of years it like i said one event or um, something can trigger your body to, to think that you may have anxiety. So that is something that may happen. And that happened to me um, a lot. In co During COVID, I was just amazed because suddenly the whole world was living the way I was living for a couple of years. So we were constrained in our house. Um, you can go anywhere. All the work was remote. So that is something that I was used to before. Um, so it was a very weird feeling to have like collective anxiety. And um, in some ways, somebody said that that on Twitter, I think I have this saved. Uh, finally, you know, anxious people feel normal <laughs> because this uh, um, unnatural state that we all, all were living through uh, is something that resembles uh, a lot of cases with that with anxiety, or a lot of people who who have it. So we, um, I, I felt actually very good <laughs> during COVID. I have to say, I was not questioning myself. Should I travel? Uh, should I not? I was not worried because I knew I couldn't go anywhere anyway. So I wasn't, um, I just dedicated my time to like doing things at home, being present there, being with my dog, doing my work, uh, doing something creative, taking photographs. Um, so COVID was um was a, a like a pause and it it in in I don't want it to come back but uh in terms of anxiety it was um something that mm, it normalized it in a way suddenly after COVID a lot of people had onset anxiety and anxiety attacks they couldn't get back to work and then suddenly you had the whole world talking about it and the Sarah um, in her book she also says that millennials and this younger generation that uh, is now emerging uh, we all almost everyone has similar symptoms here and there I also have to mention social media or anything that I, that is happening online um, sometimes it can be bit very bad for you uh, it's a it's a constructed world and um, if you don't use it for your job or if you don't use it if you have a community of people that you need, need to share something with just going on the social media and looking at uh, other people's reels and uh, stories and images can be very negative in a way I didn't for these 10 years I never um, uh, related with anyone on social media, or I didn't find anything that was helpful for my anxiety. The only thing that was helpful for my condition was something that came from me in the moment, um, something that uh, was my motivation, that something that I wanted to do, that was helpful, um, not something that I saw from other people. Or um, if I saw somebody smiling, that would make me happy. Uh, definitely not. So um, you you take these emotions from your your present from your real life, not from things online. Google is helpful. I have to say I'm as a journalist, when what I was having uh, these very, very severe anxiety states, I was Googling a lot. I was trying to help myself, of course. Some people say that's bad because you you can find so many things that that's wrong with you. Um, in in my case, I of course I I had some like negative information that I received from from Google, but at the same time I was able to find some some studies and some some things that you know um, gave me some pros and cons about doing something. 
some experiences. I, I found a cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, I, you know, while doing research, you can find a lot of things that can help you and definitely don't be uh, blind to that, be open. And especially now because, um, because there's so many things online about um, crisis, anxiety, depression. So um, it is sometimes hard to filter through that, but just be careful what resources are you using and what you're Googling and then good luck. And if you find something that, that will help you, that's amazing. In terms of how am I dealing with, uh, with the state now, uh, I think right now and after COVID, so these couple of years, I have been less anxious than before um, due to, you know, passing time. So time does heal, uh, even if it sounds very cliche, but over time, things will happen to you, um, especially things for me, losses were very, uh, something that I was mostly scared of. Because if you are anxious and then if you think about losing somebody, you may feel like that would be the end of the world. Um, you may not be able to take it. You don't know how you will, you know, react in terms of how will you be able to to cope with with loss. And my grandmother died at the end of 2019. Um, she was basically a person that raised me. So it, she was uh, one of the people that I could always count on. And um, my parents were often absent. So, so she was always there for me. And this was a, somebody that I knew, you know, heart to heart. And that really probably was the only person in, in my life that was uh, expressing their love fully um, with me. And she taught me how to, you know, share that as well. And, and she taught, taught me a lot of great things in life. And when she died, um, surprisingly, I was acting very sober. Um, I was acting very, very responsible as an adult. Um, and I, I knew um, at that point that she was no longer with us in this world, but that she kind of from, from here came into here. And um, it made me less scared, I guess. Like, I don't know how that works, but when when you experience loss of any kind that that straightens you and then i lost my dog as well um of nine years uh, she was somebody that i had when i was in the midst of anxiety and we we were she she had like a, a one leg that was damaged and i had my, my anxiety so we were kind of helping each other out so we were very very close and again, losing somebody like that really, uh, again, I thought, how am I going to go through this? But um, again, something kind of changed in here. And from from being there in my world, she came into here and it, it made me stronger. And so as you straighten through life, of course, hopefully positive things straightens you as well. But if you, if you, a lot of people... Um, they're trying, they're in this circle of anxiety, they're trying to um, go out of their ways and to do some new things, to explore, to expand their life, and they're not succeeding in that because anxiety is kind of uh, holding them back. Uh, so even those positive things can seem negative. But um, I think you shouldn't be looking like that, that things are black and white. There is a middle ground and you should just float through that middle and come out the other end, um, and you will just feel changed. You will feel stronger for all of the things that happen to you. And um, also liberation is one big, big thing. As a woman, as a girl at that time, it is very important for you to understand that you can do whatever. There are no limits. There are no constraints. Nobody, especially not authority, Nobody can tell you um, or should tell you how to express yourself, how to, to live your life, how to do something. Um, these uh, just know that anyone who comments on you, your body, the way you look, the way you behave, um, they are a less of a person than you are.
And that's that. That's the end. So don't take that in, into consideration. So your journey through anxiety should be a journey of liberation because in the end, you have to accept yourself completely with the things that you've done, things that you've missed doing, things that you hope to do in the future, things that you know that you will never do now because of something. So all of that, you have to accept yourself with, with all of this together. And the only way you can do that is by just feeling free and feeling good in your own skin. And if you have somebody around you, or if you feel that your environment is not um, supporting that, that needs to be changed in order. So there is no medication or anything that you can do or, or take that will help you if you don't change that that thing that you have in your life that is making you anxious and one of the doctors actually that had a good advice for me um something that i remembered is um because i said to him that i was very embarrassed about um people thinking this and that of me or people seeing that i was not feeling good or people seeing my anxiety attack in public he told me you should do exactly that so you should embarrass yourself that hard that everyone laughs at you and that you feel so ashamed in public that after you go through that experience you will never feel um, shameful again there is some truth to that actually because um if you as a, as a girl in an environment where you may you, you were made to feel precious untouchable um, you had to behave a certain way, you had to appear a certain way, your hair should could never be, you know, um, messy, or um, you always had to look put together. That is something later on, maybe you, you, you are not able to support that pressure anymore. And you need to feel free and you need to feel liberated. So by showing that you are just a human, and that you also can be many different things in different ways and you can embarrass yourself you can fall you can go outside in pajamas you can not wash your hair you can you know say stupid things um, by kind of uh, allowing other people to hurt you in that way uh, it makes you feel more real because ultimately like I said we live in reality so if you if you act as a princess that also is not helping you because you cannot find a match to that in the reality to others you are just a person and probably they will make fun of you in some in some I way think because i went to uh film school as well and um i i worked in arts i really think that creative people artists performers um actors actresses they can teach you a lot about how to not feel embarrassed about yourself and how to be close with so if you go to acting school for example or if you go to an acad uh, an, uh, an art academy a lot of their exercises are uh, communication exercises or you know sharing energy looking at other people um commenting on other people receiving back you know things from from you know they work in a group so it's really um uh a technique that can help you so if you can join like a drama studio or some performance studio in, in your environment even dancing um that that is that can be really helpful because it can teach you how to behave with other people if you or how to receive negative comments as well how to embarrass yourself and not feel bad about that. okay and to conclude this there are probably some things that i missed um saying and that I will remember later and regret not sharing. <laughs> but um, like I said, to sum up, uh, we live in, in very interesting times right now with social media, this connected connectedness. Um, and that is something that will affect your anxiety for sure. So you have to pay attention to how you're consuming that. Um at the same time, we live in the age of Aquarius, as they say. So we are um, we are going to feel this need to feel more free and liberated. And, um, you know, more as citizens of the world, we see that we are now more connected than ever and that we are similar, that we have similar issues, similar, you know, joys and similar pains. 
Um, so that is also something that you should take. It's a journey. Mind. So whatever happens on your way, this is your story. Um, there is no room to feel ashamed or embarrassed of anything. Um, say it out loud to anyone who wants to hear or who doesn't want to hear if you want to express it. Um, just share. There is, um, I wish when I had first experienced this condition that I was so free to tell everyone because I think my journey to recovery would be much shorter. It's okay. So whatever happens, if you don't succeed in what you were planning to do, if um, this, this quote, you know, um, succeed or die trying, it's so not good for your health. So don't think that by pushing yourself too hard that you are going to do something. If you're pushing too hard and your body reacts, it is probably because it's not for you. And you should be able to accept that as well. You, you're you not just one thing. You're so many different things and you have to discover that. So if you if you failed, let's say as a student, you can you know, find yourself in a different direction. It's not the end of the world. So things are not black and white. Um, that is very important for anxiety. Also, be able to waste your time. Be okay with wasting your time because no time is all, let's say that, you know, there is no such thing as waste time. Every moment of your life is important. If you feel that you're wasting it, it's probably because you think that you should be doing something and you're not, um, which is okay. You have to accept that. And then um, if you're in a state of anxiety, you first have to exit the state and then do the things that you wanted to do. Ultimately, all the emotions are important. So if you're sad, be sad. If you're happy, be happy. If you feel so every emotion is good when it's expressed, if it's impressed, if it stays in here, again, it will cause you this feeling of heaviness in your chest or heaviness in your, in, if, for example, for me, fear usually manifests as tightness in the stomach uh, for some reason. So you can easily get out of breath. So emotion as long as it flows outside, that's good. If somebody, again, is stopping you from expressing your emotions, that's not good for your anxiety. So you should be able to express it in any way and channel it through, recognize it first and then channel it. Uh, when I started first going to a psych psychologist, I could name only five emotions, which for me, as somebody who has a master degree, and doesn't have any clue about how I'm feeling. It's just like happy, sad, anxious, or sleepy, <laughs> which is not even an emotion. So I couldn't like name how I was feeling. So if you find yourself that you are unable to recognize different emotions, again, learning that and recognizing how you feel and expressing that is also helpful. So yeah, I wish you the best of luck in this journey. And like I said, there is no right or wrong it's your life it's a unique story so um just be there for you be present and share um if you like i said if you have any questions you can you can leave a comment or you can message me so i have to say in the end i'm very proud that i could share some of the things i thought my mind was going to be a mess when i start talking about this and i will not be able to say fully what i was hoping to say but um so far so good so i think um, I expressed everything that I wanted to say. So in the next uh, video, I will be probably talking about some different topic. I have a book that I'm reading, so it will pro probably be like a book review. Um, and then again, something about um, English grammar, because that is requested a lot as well. Uh, some grammar rules. And yeah. Bye. <laughs> See you soon. And yeah, that will be all. Take care. Bye. See you in the next one.